So good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Bombay Management Association, welcome back to another edition of the Wednesday Wisdom Webinars. We're so happy to see that uh, many of you are consistently here with us and every session we get to meet some more participants, both from the BMA family and the extended BMA family of well-wishers and uh, people who could perhaps join the BMA fraternity over a period of time. Extremely delighted to welcome Dr. Amit Seth. Dr. Amit Seth is a specialist in artificial intelligence and uh, he is currently with the South Carolina University in the United States. No, he's not traveling to India. He's coming to us right across from the United States a little early in the morning from him. But Dr. Amit, welcome on behalf of the BMA family. It's indeed a pleasure to have you here with us this evening. Just to give you a very brief introduction, he is the founding director of the Artificial Intelligence Institute of the South Carolina University and professor of computer science and engineering. Himself highly qualified with a B honors from Bits Pilani back home in India, and then went on to do his MS and PhD from the Ohio State University. A veteran in the field of artificial intelligence and its applications across several domains. He's much sought after as a speaker in such forums and also a thought provoking individual who puts people on different avenues and applications vis-a-vis -vis artificial intelligence. We owe it to our president Chaya Stegel for having uh, connected with him and got him across here this evening for this event. I'd like to hand the mic on to Chaya to make a few introductory remarks and then over to you, Dr. Amit Seth. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor, and uh, a warm welcome to Dr. Amit Shet. So with this, we take our uh, Wednesday Wisdom webinar series a notch higher wherein now we have international speakers uh, giving us their wisdom from their domain of expertise. So, so to tell you a little bit about uh, this whole thing, how it came through, uh, it was in August 2015 when we had visited the Ohio University campus uh, for our younger son's graduation. And that is when Amit uh, took us around in uh, NOESIS, which is the Ohio Center of Excellence for Knowledge Enabled Computing, where he was the executive director then, right, um, uh, right Amit? And uh, he took us around and uh, he showed us what his research scholars were doing. And it was just a year back in 2014 when uh, PM Modi had uh, taken over with landslide victory. And uh, he enthralled us with the stories of uh, how the social media was used so effectively by all his research scholars. Uh, he, this was called Cognovi Lab, which uh, which taps into emotion, sentiment, and other subjective information along with location, time, thematic topic, people, network, and other features to convert social data and domain knowledge into real time and timely actions for a wide variety of industries. And his scholars were uh, utilizing this uh, Twitterist technology, which was uh, indigenously developed by them under his leadership for uh, evaluating and understanding how the social media responses were showing towards the landslide victory. Uh, I was, uh, to say the least, um, I was awestruck because as far as uh, we were concerned, our understanding of social media in those days was just about learning Facebook. And in, during the same trip, I had also visited the Facebook campus. So we were pretty excited about it. And we were just getting used to our smartphones for using pic taking pictures and posting them on Facebook and that's it. And I was, uh, I was so impressed to see that this is how a political party had utilized this entire data and artificial intelligence first time in the largest democracy of the world to get a landslide victory. And that is when I understood and realized that this is the future. Though I'm not an expert in digital or AI, or I'm not a professional with digital expertise, but I could see that this was the future of things to come. 
uh, then happened uh, 2016 when I became the executive committee member in uh, Bombay Management Association and we had our first enterpriser summit uh, wherein we again had some people flown in from uh, uh, USA from California, Silicon Valley. And I have been just thinking how to have Amit, you know, talk to our people, share his knowledge, share this something, this something which is so new and so alien to all of us. It was just not working out. We tried it in Digital Leadership Summit last year on 8th November, but he wasn't available. Then again, I tried in Scale Up Summit on 18th of January. That did not happen. And, the, you know, something, this webinar could have happened anytime. But then in those days, it was the human touch, you know, which overpowered everything else. And we just couldn't understand why should we have a webinar when we can have a person to come and address us uh, in, uh, you know, uh, with, with the human touch. But now the touch and touch word itself has become a no, no, right? And now suddenly, therefore, webinar becomes a preferred option and preferred tool of learning. And that's how then uh, I said, okay, now we are going to request Amit to do it. And he very nicely agreed as soon as I approached him. In fact, he had difficulty in uh, finalizing this date because he said his calendar is too full. But then since I've been chasing him for four years, I think he found it a little difficult to say no for my <laughs> request. Finally, we have got Amit Shades to you all. Amit, thank you so much for accepting the invite. It is very early in US. And thank you for keeping an alarm and sending me a note in the night that I have to go to bed, but I've still not received Zoom details. So I sent out a mail to him that don't worry, when you wake up in the morning, you'll find those details in your inbox. And so here we are, and he is there to be on Zoom before all of us. So that's professionalism for you all. So over to you, Amit. We are now just waiting for you to take us through the journey of AI. Thank you very much, Haya. Very kind of you. Uh, I always wanted to come and uh, um, you know present in person. Uh, let's say this is the second best, but uh, a very generous introduction. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mani, for uh, the logistics. All right, so we'll just get started, um, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll have a lot of time at the end for you to ask questions. Uh, let me share the screen. There we are. And all right, so I think everybody should be able to see the presentation momentarily. It's loading. There you are. Um, great. So um, the growth of AI has been phenomenal. It's been less than a decade. Uh, and, and now it is kind of hard for uh, many uh, companies uh, to think about growing or to, to in fact, even survive without the use of AI. I'm going to give uh, some comments uh, uh, that are relevant with respect to Indian situation uh, and, and the global context uh, for AI in India and give you then some sample examples uh, that could be happening anywhere uh, in the world and, and certainly also in India. Um, the story for AI, at least in these last few years, I'm not talking about AI. I used to have a project in AI in 80s, 1980s, um, and that was different time. But uh, in this last decade where we have seen tremendous growth of AI, the story basically uh, starts with a lot of data, data of every kind. There are 500 million plus users. There are so many uh, video cameras everywhere. Uh, there is huge amount of data from genetic testing. Um, everywhere, everything you see, there is massive amount of data. And um, while data and inf even information to some level is cheap, um, what is problem is uh, to understand what the data tells you. And how to, what, what is a challenging thing is to how to uh, make uh, good decisions based on what that data tells you. So AI, artificial intelligence is all about converting data into knowledge, insights, and action. And um, uh, here's an interesting uh, quote uh, from a CEO of uh, one of the very large uh, uh, venture uh, fund or uh, investment firm uh, at the World Economic Forum. He said, every company now is an AI company. 
and he's not talking about computer science companies he's talking about industrial companies are changing the supply chain in every single sector it's not just tech um, if you are not started to see that um, i you know uh, then perhaps you've been uh, isolated somewhat um, just last week uh, there was this is a statement uh, where um, the new ceo of ibm um, this is a fourth major ceo of uh, the largest tech company says every company will be an ai company i think uh, it's not uh, every company is already more or less using ai or majority of companies are using ai now <clears throat> at a um, uh, international level in terms of national priorities many countries have started to uh, really focus on ai and have had uh, for last 2 3 years uh, considered a fort uh, i think china was probably the first and the us uh, i guess feels very you know strong need to compete with china so um, last year uh, us came out with a national plan um, i don't know exactly what that counterpart is in, in india uh there is a, a you know uh, in passing i'll mention that um us still seems to be um, ahead in the world uh, in the in terms of ai research but china is uh, significantly ahead in ai development and monetization i i i'm copying this i'm saying this with a reason because it 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 it, it is also relevant to india so um, just last week uh, uh, india indian management association had this um, a uh, talk by the ceo of niti ayog where um, he noted that india will need to use um, technology to leap frog and there i think ai will take the center stage i quite agree with him um, <clears throat> at the same time uh, i would note that india is late to the game um, i've been um, editor in chief of some journals and uh, <clears throat> i see the scientific products uh, first hand from various countries in many of the uh, ai conferences the top conferences in ai where all the new research gets published uh, china often have the uh, has the largest number of publications followed by us uh, and in this is this is a slide about patterns for example uh, so so i think india is uh, not that uh, you know ahead uh, yet um, but um, but there is a uh, thing that is changed but but there is some there is a saving grace in terms of ai skills uh, india is not all that you know doing that badly and uh, india does have the capacity to um, uh, quickly grow the skills necessary to apply ai it's not there yet but it has that capacity um also uh, uh, you know uh, this you know speaker at the indian management association last year uh, sorry last week uh, pointed to this report from accenture it says that ai has the potential to uh, add uh, nearly a trillion dollars or 15% of uh, india's growth uh, gross value in by by 2035 that's 15 years uh, away so uh, so these expectations are pretty high Uh, and, and there will be huge opportunities for uh, all of you in management to make that happen. Uh, the you know I I don't have too much time today, but essentially we can make a frame a case for AI in terms of a variety of societal drivers, and then there are a lot of technical areas. I'll speak to some of the technical areas in today's talk where AI makes big impact. Um, this is a slide that kind of shows. Um, uh ai and its uh, impact in terms of uh, value that ai is adding to all kinds of industry the point here is that um ai applications are everywhere uh, according to mr kant again the last week's talk uh, it's a very wonderful a very good talk uh, he identify mobility like electrical vehicles like li lithium ion batteries uh, mobile tech um these to be um, uh, particularly uh, ex uh, important areas uh, right now uh, where uh, he thinks that um, there be significant growth india has significant opportunity and ai will play a role uh, i however i feel that in addition to what he identified practically everywhere there is digitization 
whether in health, fintech, education, auto manufacturing, pharma, agriculture, and telemedicine. Everywhere, um, I think uh, if there's digital data, AI can penetrate very fast. Um, uh, one of the important thing um, is the changing scenario. And then um, you can introduce a technology much faster uh, when uh, there is a, a shift going on in the, in the world of business um, and, and, and society as a whole. So just a few days ago, um, Eric Smith, the former CEO of Google said that post pandemic, 80% of um, healthcare um, will be or is going to be uh, telehealth or digital health. Today, uh, I work with uh, my, my, my colleagues in uh, medical school uh, extensively. Um, and uh, I was just yesterday talking to um, uh, somebody at uh, Vale Cornell Medicine uh, in New York. And 100% um, of their mental health services become uh, online. So um, now once you have the data online, using AI to further make sense out of the data becomes far more easier. But it's not just the environment that's changing, some aspects of business and business models are changing. So uh, just as just a couple of things. Um, well, uh, until now, insurance companies were in the US were uh, reticent, were not quite keen to uh, reimburse doctors for the services they would provide online. So naturally, uh, online services did not uh, go very fast. But now suddenly they have had to uh, do that. Medicare and insurance companies now have started to uh, reimburse. Suddenly, uh, I think doctors are jumping uh, and, and, and you know, in, in providing digital services and they have all the intense incentives they need. Uh, and they have the efficiency. Um, so I think that's a you know, good push and pull both going on. Technology push and business pull or you know, market pull. Um, similarly, um, I mean, in India, we saw a while ago where uh, telecommunication revolution, where uh, the uh, old uh, government, uh, you know, um, telephone company could not give you landlines, but everything changed with the um, uh, wireless. Uh, you know, and then everybody can get lines. The same thing can happen, uh, you know, with AI. Uh, also, uh, you might uh, be aware that tele in teleradiology, a lot of uh, radiology readings are done in India. Again, because, uh, well, the doctors in the U.S. will sign, but much of the work is done in India or, or, or outside of U.S. I think the same way, a lot of outsourcing of, um, uh, you know, or new form of outsourcing with for, involving all this digital data can happen uh, in India. And, um, uh, but uh, for India to compete with others, uh, the, there will need to be very high efficiency and for that, you need to have AI. So um, uh, AI is revolutionary or it has a revolutionary role, but it's not in isolation. What's also happening is that um, there are a lot of other things happening that relate to a creation of the data I kind of already mentioned. But in particular, um, you know, there is a substantial improvement with regards to sensors everywhere, Internet of Things, uh, biotechnology, growth, digital payments, uh, behavioral sci uh, you know, science and psychology, understanding of human, all of these are happening and uh, uh, AI is enabling uh, or strongly working with all of these kind of um, other uh, major technological and scientific um, progress that is happening. Now management needs to appreciate uh, this need uh, and, you know, uh, the, and understand that a lot of opportunity will come uh, uh, by combining the discipline. So like biotechnology and AI working together will create a huge opportunity and hence um, really uh, learn to create the multi uh, effective multidisciplinary um, uh, teams. That will be an important thing for you to do. Here is a, um, a nearly two years old uh, slide by Gartner on the high technology. Um, and uh, if you see here, uh, of among all the high technologies, all of uh, there is there is a very significant presence of AI technologies. You see deep neural networks on the top, uh, uh, conversational AI platform, AGI, knowledge graphs, artificial general, general intelligence. 
And you also see other technologies where there'll be strong connection between that technology and AI. When you have brain computer interface to make sense of the data is the AI algorithms that will make, make understanding. And associated with all these, um, this is a slide that I made when I had to give the leadership talk uh, as I uh, you know, uh, was planning to come to South, University of South Kenya to start this uh, university-wide institute of, uh, for in artificial intelligence. And you can see on the right-hand side, a variety of interdisciplinary AI applications, augmented personalized health, medical expertise, surveillance, capitalism, disinformation, radicalization. So many of these things in education where uh, AI is play, playing uh, or will play a very big role. Um, today, uh, subject to the time we have, I will uh, give you uh, examples uh, from the uh, areas on the left. Uh, I also have, uh, we also happen to work on the right side of the, uh, of the slide, but uh, won't have time. So uh, let's start with um, a few examples at, at relatively uh, high level, given the time and uh, the, the forum. Uh, pharma, for example, recently I had to give a talk to uh, a college of pharmaceuticals and, and, and explain them the uh, you know, significant role of AI that, you know, that, uh, that will be played. In fact, the, you know, it's important for students to know that uh, no longer they can just know their own discipline uh, in a traditional sense. They'll have to come to learn, uh, they'll have to learn how to use the data and in principle, a variety of digital and AI technologies. So um, um, in pharma, for example, uh, AI is used for each of variety of different uh, classes of applications, as you can see here. And, um, and the kind of role of AI has is something listed here. Um, I won't go into detail. I'll just give you a, a kind of insight into one uh, little aspect of pharmacovigilance. Uh, every uh, drug company after they make a product have to continue to monitor uh, the use of the product in the market and um, um, you know the way uh, clinical trials work it's impossible to find all the negative things uh, that can happen after you put the drug in the market so uh, there have been a lot of cases for example cox2 inhibitor um, where um, you know it was in, put in the market uh, but uh, after getting into the market uh, we found out of severe side effect you know any the drug had to be pulled back uh, here is an example of um, uh, something that happened in my group, um, we had a National Institute of Health funded project where we are analyzing social media data. And there is this drug called lopramide or also sold as Imodium, Imodium AD uh, uh, for, for managing diarrhea. Well, uh, people who are abusing uh, opioids uh, and, and you know, um, prescription drugs, they were using um, um, this over-the-counter drug in 10 to 20 times prescribed dosage to manage the withdrawal side effect. We were able to identify this uh, kind of use and substantial use in, within the US. And uh, we published our paper in 2013. Uh, later on, three uh, toxicology uh, studies followed, uh, citing our work. And then in 2016, three, in three years, FDA came up with a warning. So this is a good example of pharmacovigilance uh, work where AI played substantial role. Understanding the social media data, as I'll show you the second example, uh, is pretty challenging. And uh, AI played, uh, you know, uh, in particular natural language processing and knowledge graph technologies played a very significant role. Just to give you um, at a very high level uh, an understanding of the uh, kind of AI application here. What you see here is a text that is on a web forum. And um, AI, you know, the, the, we had to write algorithms to understand this text. The interesting thing is that, so, so we created a model called Knowledge Graph. Um, in January, I had a, my keynote in India was on Knowledge Graph at, uh, at, at this conference in, um, in data mining and uh, databases in, in Bangalore. So here, uh, you know, all the concepts that are used in the particular domain of drug and drug abuse uh, are models. You can see that little graph in the middle. And it tells you, you know, buprenorphine is the same thing as uh, uh, Subutex and Subaxone, which are the brand names. And that bupin, bup, 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 that is what uh, people talk about it on the street. And this kind of, um, you know, knowledge representation along with uh, uh, natural language processing techniques allows us to identify every 
mention of this term in in highly more precise way and then it allows us to uh, say what doses people use in so one of the things was that oh they were using this thing in a very high dose so we were able to understand that uh, people are taking there is a 4 mg or a 20 mg you are able to see understand that you are able to see that they are um, injecting or they are snorting or what all those kind of things you are able to see that's all these are all the natural language processing things understanding things that you have to do with ai and that is what allowed us to this study uh, let me give you another example of things that happens right now yesterday we spent um, uh, uh, more than an hour uh, with a um, journalist uh, uh, from mit tech review uh, to discuss uh, the work that we are just going on uh, we call it uh, psychedemic uh, measuring spatial temporal psychological impact of current ongoing uh, you know coronavirus problem with uh, on the so what we call a social quality um, so uh, in this particular case um, the question we have is how do real world events and policy decisions like uh, when you know in the us these are done at a state level um, so school closings uh, closing of non national business uh, you know cases picking uh, tapering off um, availability of clin clinical services hospital getting full uh, and, and the uh, resulting effect like uh, people losing jobs in in very large number how does uh, that impact uh, of uh, uh, of these decisions vary by geography uh, by demographics uh, gen z versus millennial and um, uh, uh, you know and on, on uh, issues of public health and social health uh, and in particular we focus on mental health including depressions and suicide uh, addiction uh, and domestic violence so uh, so far we have collected more than 800 million tweets uh, uh, of which about 45 million we have been able to identify locations and then um, uh, we also collected more than 700000 articles and you'll find you know a lot of tweets talking about uh, the issues of interest in direct and indirect ways. So uh, this, the tweet I see uh, in the bottom, uh, well, uh, it, it is indicative of some mental health issues, um, uh, anxiety maybe, or 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 uh, depression. So uh, in our analysis, for example, uh, we we found um, uh, you know how uh, week by week uh, we can we can see day by day uh, how the um, what we, we define something called social quality index and that index is made up of uh, uh, this uh, you know impact on mental health uh, addiction and violence and um, we could see the change by uh, you know uh, week by week so from the time uh, we started collecting the data uh, the lighter color means things are worse and so um, these are uh, states where uh, things continue uh, to um, uh, you know, become worse week after week. But then there were some states, interestingly, where um, uh, things uh, uh, were pretty bad, started to become better, and again started to go worse. So here you can see a different set of states on the left-hand side that I mentioned where these things have changed. Uh, you can see the phrase cloud on the top, uh, um, but you can also see frequency of terms associated with depression, addiction, anxiety. Um, and uh, based on that, the higher instance of these, poorer the social quality. So you can see that those things changing over the period of time. We can see this by states. We can see this by city. Uh, we can see it by. Uh, we can then try to correlate that with the um, uh, decisions that people have made. This is a rather busy slide. Uh, I won't go into detail, but you can see here uh, this. The, you know, we mentioned um, uh, where in the particular week uh, school, there were school closures. There are business closures in certain uh, states. There are new social distance regulations that came in. There were business relief that were announced by government. Uh, there were unemployment increases and how much increase there are. So we look at all those things that are happening in the real world. And we look at what's, uh, what we observe uh, from social media and what, they, what that feedback from social media tells us. And then we are, you know, we are able to understand the impact of all these uh, uh, things on, on society. Uh, and then we can also see the impact on the decisions, the policy decisions like business relief that government may put together. 
this is an example where um, we are, um, uh, you know, comparing Gen Z um, and, and millennials. So Gen Zs are typically uh, school, um, uh, you know, peers going, uh, you know, students uh, and, and college going students, often people under about 20, 22, 20 to 23 years old. And then millennials who are, are kind of young adults, uh, mature adults uh, or, or young families. Um, and uh, we could study uh, different issues they are uh, uh, reacting to, different things they are paying attention to. For example, in uh, Gen Z, there was a lot of conversation on entertainment, on playing games online and those kind of things. Uh, while on the, um, uh, you know, uh, millennial, there were more, more issues with regards to um, family, uh, job and things of that nature. And then you can study each of them by in detail, which I won't go into. I'll move to the next topic uh, in personalized digital health. Uh, this is an area where India, um, I, I've, I, I, I always believe that India uh, can uh, adapt this on a very large scale. Uh, we have uh, still a large number of rural population and uh, clinics are pretty far for many people. Um, and um, um, being able to provide uh, distant medic medicines using digital data, digital health uh, is, is very attractive. The costs have come down drastically. So it's a matter of just creating the um, infrastructure and uh, incentive systems and, and, and search that, that, that will allow us to, uh, you know, triage and, you know, screen the patients remotely and, and provide them services. So, uh, uh, here, I let me. Um, uh, one of the, at least in US, a huge there's huge growth growth in what we call as patient generated health data. So the traditional healthcare is like uh, you don't feel good, you go and you know see a doctor, and doctor uh, you know collects some data, gets the lab done, and makes a decision for you. Uh, think about chronic care, uh, uh, chronic diseases. You'll see the doctor every once in six months or three months. That's the traditional you know, time period. That's what insurance company will also pay for. Well, in mental health, things change day to day, right? There are many diseases where in asthma, things could change any time. So uh, now with uh, all kinds of um, uh, you know, technologies, you can have Fitbit for uh, sleep and activity. You can have at home, you can have oximetry. Uh, you can have uh, lung functioning by just, you know, um, um, for, at home. So all these devices are fairly cheap. Uh, and um, you can, so people are increasingly collecting data at home, Apple Watch or any, you know, many, many other devices. And, um, and the algorithms uh, can understand when there is enough changes in the data, when there are things of concern to, to, you know, uh, to take care of when a particular medical event has occurred. For example, arrhythmia can be uh, uh, you know, identified by devices uh, like smartwatches. So uh, in our case, for example, we uh, uh, completed a study uh, involving pediatric asthma patients and we collected um, 29 different parameters uh, you know, of the data. For example, um, one of the biggest thing in India has been uh, the uh, air pollution. Uh, so PM 2.5, and you probably, uh, things have just changed uh, uh, since the coronavirus uh, prob uh, you know, problem. But until then, um, Air Quality India was really having a huge impact in the public health uh, context. Uh, and uh, in our study, we found that there's a very strong correlation between uh, PM 2.5 uh, and, and, and uh, many air quality and, um, and asthma incidences. And there are other things that we also found and how the things are correlating. And these are... Uh, these are things at individual level. So uh, there may be uh, siblings, uh, but one gets affected at, with certain exposure, other does not. So, so understanding all that is very important. The technology here can uh, be very helpful. Here, uh, if we developed an algorithm to automatically tell the patient how well controlled the asthma is based on all the things we have measured. And we potentially can, all, we of course can then give them feedback. It looks like a doctor has, doctor has prescribed you to take control of medication. Uh, well, you're not taking it on the, you know, routinely and hence you have to take more severe, um, uh, you know, uh, medications uh, for, called rescue medications, which have also more side effects like corticosteroid. 
So, so, so the technology can help you understand, analyze the data even at an individual level and make better healthcare decisions. Uh, here is an application uh, that relates to, uh, you know, diet, uh, you know, many diseases can be controlled by diet management, uh, diabetes, obesity, hypertension. Uh, and it just so happens that these diseases are, have grown or are growing very, very fast in India. So uh, personalized nutrition management uh, chatbot is just one of the, uh, you know, uh, that incorporates AI techniques uh, can, can help with these things. Uh, let me see if I can have a very quick video. Uh, we are also looking into nutrition and diet management. Essential nutrition intake and controlled calorie consumption significantly improve quality of life and overall well-being of our health. But the challenge for the person here is knowing the nutrition information and keeping track of the cumulative calorie consumption of their meals. Nourish is a chatbot built upon Google Assistant. It helps the users to manage and monitor their dietary patterns and weight and assist them in making more informed decisions about their food choices. It provides nutrition information for food or meals reported by the user, keeps track of cumulative calorie intake and recommend meals. It alerts the user with personalized information, for example, for excess calorie consumption. Okay, tell me the nutritional content of one cheesecake. Here's what I found. It may not. Oops, I, uh, uh, let's see. Ah, let me see if I can. Uh, okay, so uh, in this case, um, um, uh, ah, my, my, my fault. Okay, all right. So, um, Let me wrap up the video. No, it's loading. Don't worry. Yeah, it'll load. It will play better actually on this mod. The pizza. Here's a quick breakdown. All right, show me my weight progression. Sure, plotting it out. How about my calorie? All right, give me, give me a sec. Please share my progress on Facebook. <laughs> you probably don't want to do that. All right. So, uh, uh, you know, they are, uh, in doing this, there are a number of AI techniques that go into, uh, you know, um, to make this happen, uh, image recognition. So we can um, talk to this chatbot and uh, we can uh, message to it, but we can also just take photograph of what you're eating and try and the system automatically understands what you're eating. Uh, and then it goes to, it consults a very large nutritional knowledge base. Uh, you know, developed by a company uh, that I also advise. Um, and um, it tells you the nutritional content of that, what you're eating. And then it, uh, you know, analyzes for your, you know, dietary requirements and things. And so, for example, right now we are working on type one diabetes patients. Um, uh, and and um, uh, another uh, clinician we are working with us is looking for using this same thing in hypertension won't go into some of these technical details. I just, uh, there are very large number of growing, growing number of startups uh, that, that are saying they will use AI to transform healthcare. Uh, next uh, topic I'll quickly uh, touch upon is disaster record. Uh, and uh, there are, you know, uh, it can help with these humanitarian organizations, first response coordinator, affected individuals and person wishing to provide support. Let me quickly, uh, you know, give you this uh, uh, India uh, centric example. The disaster record technology provides situational awareness to assist first responders and humanitarian organizations in relief coordination during natural disasters. My name is Amit Sheth. I'm the executive director of the Ohio Center of Excellence in Knowledge and Computing.
sensor big data during many major natural disasters in real time. What if a tool can analyze, summarize, and draw insights from streaming social media messages, every tweet, every image, associated sensor and satellite data, and know every relevant location to help government and humanitarian organizations, as well as first responder and volunteer networks to coordinate the response? Disaster record is that tool. Twitter users provide witness accounts of the unfolding situation and share their critical needs during natural disasters. Disaster Record provides functionalities for those individuals in need and seeking to fulfill those needs by reaching out to the audience for their social feeds. But after some feedback we got from professionals from the humanitarian world, Disaster Record now provides aggregate analysis and summaries for governmental agencies and humanitarian organizations, allowing them to monitor and help affected people. We are considering the example of Chennai floods 2015 in this demo. Let's choose a time range. The tool then provides aggregated and individual level functionalities. Now let us zoom into the Chennai airport area and see what is happening there. We should draw a bounding box to do the aggregation to see rescue and shelter needs clustered by location names. The word cloud here provides the thematic summaries of what is happening in that area. There is a theme of airport remaining shut for a while. And when we go to tweets, we would see in this example that it says the airport will remain shut until December 6th. When you click on the shelter needs, the word cloud themes would change to help, togetherness, and so on. If you click on the Chennai airport location name, you would see that somebody two kilometers away is offering shelter to people stuck in the airport and gives the contact number. You can now click on these icons to peek into the images coming from that same area. This picture, for example, shows the airport runway flooded with two persons in it. You can also see in the pictures of vehicles an airplane in the middle of the flooded runway. Now, let's switch to the individual level of analysis. The legend on the right shows the different markers on the map. The visible flooded areas come from the satellite images using the flood mapping method along with the OpenStreetMap location features. Let's take this example tweet. It asks for rescue help for elders. We can match it with the location available according to the knowledge from the satellite images and provide turn-by-turn -turn directions. This functionality allows decision makers to communicate the needs with the available locations which can afford the response. So now we are starting to work with, um, uh, you know, uh, the sea coast uh, of um, uh, of South Kenya, where there is frequent uh, flooding and uh, hurricanes and uh, storm surge and such. So um, the last uh, example, very quickly, uh, I'll give is that of what is happening in India. Uh, and in full disclosure, I'm uh, I, I I do advise this company. Um, and uh, here, uh, this company also happens to be um, significantly um, um, supported by uh, the largest business family or business in India. Um, and it's, I'm very pleased to see that uh, education is also on the radar of, uh, of, of uh, you know, this business. So um, they are developing personalized learning platform for everyone through um ai uh, you know platform uh, for education they want to improve outcome uh, and um, the you know the, through behavior energies as well as machine learning um and the name of the company is imbibe um uh, you know and and in their their uh, workflow they have uh, thought about uh, you know engaging all the stakeholders i won't go into that detail uh, here is the platform uh, information uh, that the company provided me to uh, share. Uh, but the uh, to give you just uh, an idea, they they're really making significant investment in this so-called knowledge graph, one of the newer technologies that has taken over. Uh, you know, at least in U.S. and China, this is very very uh, important technology. Um, but creating a deep knowledge about education for all kinds of um, uh, you know, exams like JEE or uh, grade, grade uh, 8, 9, 10 uh, of different, uh, I guess, system ISB or whatever, uh, is, is a daunting task. And creating that uh, through a degree of automation is what they are, uh, uh, you know, working towards. And then there is a lot of other things that you have to do to personalize for an individual uh, user. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's uh, outcome uh, oriented learning, um, personalized path to learning is given, 
um, and and um, you know mentors are also supported uh, and so on and so forth. So um, it's a pretty uh, comprehensive play in applying AI to a, a very challenging but very very important area of education. Um, so with that, um, uh, let me um, share my parting thoughts. Uh, uh, India needs to be globally competitive, at, especially to capture unique market opportunities due to the transformational um, events um, uh, such as the one that is going on now. Uh, it's only unlikely that a company can be globally competitive without significant application of AI. I mean, good friend, I lost uh, you. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now you're okay, go ahead. Okay, all right. It was uh, very temporary. So, um, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I think yesterday I was uh, looking at um, um, uh, a video of um, a panel a presentation by my, my good friend, uh, uh, Arun Segal, and um, the, it, it, uh, the competitiveness, you know, so uh, there's a lot of discussion in, in political and other circles to say, oh, can we capture all the manufacturing from China? Uh, you know, with, uh, is, that's, a, that's a unique opportunity. And I think um, the, the point would be that, yeah, there is an opportunity, but uh, you, you know, India would need to uh, you know, Arun was saying that, look, uh, if you, you know, it takes, it takes only three days for China to deliver on products, um, you know, automobile kind of products, let's say, it takes us 14 to 15 days. Many of these things would require much higher efficiency and, um, uh, and, and, and um, automation and uh, AI will have to be a, an integral uh, component of that. Um, education, on the other hand, education training from, and, uh, from Indian industry is not world class. Even now, um, yeah, there are some very good um, institutions, and uh, yes, uh, uh, we still get bright students from India doing, uh, you know, masters and PhD in US, and um, uh, and that's good. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, general, um, you know, if you skip uh, that a few top level institutions uh, and just come to the middle tier. Um, quality uh, drops up very substantially. So um, just as what happened during the uh, IT outsourcing boom, uh, where uh, Indian education system did not produce uh, high enough quality students, unlike China, uh, uh, but, uh, IT companies had to have a six month training program for anybody they hire. And and thus and then they would quickly train the uh, you know uh, in new new employee for with with whatever they need to know enough uh, to get productive on the, the job and the, there's enough cost arbitrage to um, make it worthwhile. The important thing is that with the use of AI and such, the labor cost arbitrage would not be there. So you will really, really need to uh, you know you, you just don't have any option here. Uh, and you really have to use, uh, uh, you know, technology uh, to be competitive in many of the cases. Um, um, the next thing is um, a management will need to be AI literate, uh, very well engaged and well informed to define business opportunities uh, when the risk can be taken. Um, we have been, uh, generally speaking, not that high risk takers uh, and, and also very quickly develop and adapt uh, new business models, recruit talent and uh, execute very, very smartly. So these are just some high level things. Um, I'm sure there are, you know, there's a lot of knowledge uh, in management uh, on management issues in, in uh, among, the, among this audience. All right, so with that, let me wrap up the talk and um, open up for the questions. Thank you, Dr. Amit. And uh, Chaya is just kind of uh, trying to segregate the questions into what could come first for you. Just about a minute from now, we will begin. Sorry, sounds good.
here may not be uh, oh okay here all right so i should speak up now he has unmuted me i had been speaking without knowing that i was uh, on mute actually okay <laughs> so yeah 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 so never mind i said it was a very interesting uh, presentation and uh, the focus on health and education is uh, something which is of interest to each and every person it is also of great interest to society and uh, our nation focus on health is of course right now because of corona becomes all the more important and it is very heartening to see as to how all these uh, challenges which have come up for healthcare as well as uh, you know otherwise uh, uh, in pharma pharmaceutical industry ai can help really very well and those live case studies help uh, in creating hope and understanding that's that's what is this uh, witness to wisdom is all about because wisdom should create hope and optimism so thank you very much for that even uh, i like that short thing that you shared at the end about the education though i would have liked to hear a little more about it because uh, here in our management association we have our membership spread across uh, corporates businesses and also academic institutions so maybe little more about uh, the education and more about you know the indian education i mean see you have uh, initially studied in india then you went to us so you are probably the right person to point out you know the gaps or where we are failing where you know education seems to be the priority for everybody but then brain drain continues and uh, yet we have a very peculiar uh, situation in our country where everybody is qualified but it is very difficult to get the right person for the right job that is a typical uh, issue of our uh, system so how ai can probably help over there or where we should we need to improve so that you know we can become competitive just having a demographic a demographic dividend and having a huge number of youth is uh, it doesn't really make us competitive without quality so how and where are we lacking and how it can help us is going to be my question uh, once you answer that then we'll move ahead so um uh, yeah i have had long association with um, um education in india i was i almost accepted uh, an offer to um, be a founding director uh, vice chancellor of a new in, uh, you know triple it and then then there were challenges related to the commitment for academic independence um uh, and in and and uh, you know political influence uh, influence staying away from that that along with one other topic reason why i i did not make that move um so uh, in particular i've been you know paying a lot of attention to the higher education um uh, to narendra by uh, i give i had three one hour sessions um uh, where my objective was to explain him why india should um, invest um, in higher education uh, i remember giving uh, uh, you know tell uh, my my first meeting was in 2008 on this topic where i told him that at that point um uh, google had hired uh, about uh, one first 1000 people google had hired were all phd's more or less and uh, for, and they were from uh, you know stanford and berkeley and the silicon valley so edu higher education system is so important and i co contrasted uh, the investment uh, he understands the um, capital industry very well so i co contrasted the investment uh, and um, in the industrial companies like uh, the uh, huge refinery in gujarat uh, where uh, there are resources or other constraints and people go and work there versus uh, the knowledge industry and knowledge society uh, companies coming up where there is talent and um, uh, also remember saying that um, in two a year before i met th that talk to uh, meeting with him india's gdp india gdp was 1.1 trillion google's valuation one single company's valuation 100 billion just one tenth of the entire gdp of india so and and the growth is so high um and and since then things have only accelerated the market value of um, all the top 5 companies or top 10 nine companies uh, five in us and four in china is is massive right and the um high paying employment that and the wealth generation that creates is massive 
uh, unfortunately, I wasn't very successful in, in that. I even, in spite, you know, my talk is still available online uh, and, and the government continues to not have the right, um, that, that, you know, I mean, I, a lot more can be done. Maybe I shouldn't say too much in the public forum like this. Um, uh, the, um, the, the imbibe example I gave is very interesting and I think very, very uh, uh, valuable. Uh, current focus is, uh, for example, training the uh, is eighth, ninth, tenth grade students and um, uh, students taking all kinds of exams like GEE that uh, they have to take in India. But it is also a lot more on personalized education. Uh, it is a lot more on um, you know uh, incentivizing and using the behavioral uh, aspects to uh, get students to really uh, learn. Uh, as opposed to just take the exam, although do take the exam, but uh, uh, good quality of learning is very important. So all of these things are um, uh, is part of this platform. And um, the uh, I also is also heartening to see that the company is really uh, investing in creating unique IP uh, that would be uh, that will stand it apart. That will that will give it a dividend. Um, to give you an analogy. Um, uh, I started my uh, second company in 1999, which had developed uh, a knowledge graph. And um, because of, uh, and we had web search, uh, you know, just like Google, uh, way before Google came with semantic search and uh, search. Uh, the first pattern was awarded to my company uh, and, and me and my students. But uh, the 2000 happened where the market crashed. Uh, and hence, I could not take my company, uh, you know, uh, grow in, in the web search market and I, it had to become a uh, financial company, company serving financial market. But Google came back, came with the similar kind of ideas in 2012 and 13 and today's Google search cannot happen without so-called knowledge graph. So big, huge knowledge that is, but that is a lot of investment to make that happen. And then other techniques like deep learning and NLP that is applied with that. This company Imbibe, is making that kind of investment to create the um, very uh, significant, um, uh, you know, um, knowledge graph uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, understanding what you need to learn at this grade for this exam uh, and everything in a lot of detail. And, uh, you know, uh, it understands that uh, you have a concept like, um, os you know, uh, osmosis or, or, or uh, you know, a biochemical concept. What do you learn at eighth grade versus what do you learn at tenth grade? All of that is, you know, modeled uh, in fairly um, a detail, uh, fairly good detail. And there are the the learning modules uh, go into different levels of details. It knows what you learned, what you not learned. It knows what you can practice. You need to practice more. So education is not just that simple. Uh, and uh, you know, each students have typically their own uh, learning. You know. Uh, patterns, their own, you know, uh, pace at which they can learn their own uh, uh, weak points. Uh, and there the technology can play a very significant role and make a leveling field, uh, you know, because you can, uh, the student can practice more on one that he's weak on and um, uh, move on in something else. So, so um, uh, this is a good example where technology can play a very big role, but it is not that easy to make it. And that corresponding investment is being made and, and I think that, that may, may, and, and the investment is not small. And the fact that that level of investment is committed is very heartening. So thank you, Amit, for the detailed uh, reply. The next question that comes to us over here is uh, from Ursula Thakkar. She says that uh, in most of the companies, AI and new technologies are seen as the domain of only IT department. What needs to be done to make AI learning more democratic, to make management or employees more AI literate? And that means basically first to make them more AI friendly and make them realize that everybody needs to learn AI and not just the IT department. So Ursula's point that um, uh, you know AI should not be limited to IT is absolutely right. Uh, if you uh, notice in my um, you know part towards the end, um, I talked about. Uh, um, uh, need for multi. First of all, in fact, at the start, I said there is a, this is a multidisciplinary issue, and uh, uh, IT doesn't understand the customer needs. IT doesn't understand the market needs. So right there, management and uh, you know business develop. You know uh, business managers, the uh, 
you know, market facing people should be involved. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, anybody, see, the, uh, depends on the company. The IT can be very narrow, support giving you network and laptops and uh, software versus IT that can be, you know, touching most of the point, parts of, uh, uh, you know, the actual business operations of the company. So it depends on how IT is organized in the company. Nevertheless, <clears throat> she's absolutely right. Um, well, I think only thing is training, uh, you know, changing the management education and training the managers. Uh, my uh, keynote talk was at ISB, I I I Indian School of Business in Bangalore. And um, <clears throat> um, uh, uh, thankfully, much of the management education can be, you know, one year and uh, you can really train them uh, or, or make them aware much faster. And the talks like these hopefully can help them really think so. Um, there can also be, uh, and I think there are available, uh, you know, case studies, uh, which, which is very uh, frequently used in management education, yeah. where um, the, uh, where, where you can demonstrate uh, uh, the uh, choices companies make on how to undertake uh, AI technologies and uh, the implication thereof. So I think you, you can take that, uh, you know, a strategy of, of uh, a starting point. Them. Yeah, uh, and, and exposing them to, to the, those kind of states. Uh, they, they the, yeah. 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 Thank you. I think that was again a very good uh, response. We, we start uh, them with when they are young, so that when they enter the corporates, they are already aware of the importance of AI, regardless of whichever department they enter or whichever function they choose to be in. So, yeah, very, very relevant. The next question uh, we have is uh, from Dr. Jatin Panjoli. Um, he first compliments you for a great presentation. And uh, then he is asking you about uh, some behavioral nudges for accounting and finance with the help of AI. I mean, you touched upon the health, you touched upon the education. I think the third most important uh, area for uh, people is uh, their wealth. And so I think with that, uh, probably we'll have a presentation which would have covered all the necessary areas of life for everyone. Please comment on that, how AI can be useful for that. Uh, uh, in, in which context? In the, uh, in, in, I mentioned in education, um, uh, uh, essentially um, my, my best experience is in health. Um, no, no, uh, so no, 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 maybe, maybe I need to just clarify again. So let us take the example of stock market. Can we hmm. use uh, AI in prediction of stock market? Because there are a lot of disasters happening over there also, and people are very much interested in predicting over there. So let us, uh, Dr. Panchali, will that be okay to take that example? Yes. Okay. So yeah. So, so let's take uh, the example of stock market and uh, say how AI can be used. So it, it so happens that uh, uh, my latest company that I founded uh, um, in 2016, uh, you can look up on the web, is, uh, the, the name is Cognovi Labs, uh, C-O-G-N-O-V-I-L-A-B-S dot com. Yeah. Yeah. And that is actually in this space. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, the same general technology that I showed you that was used uh, for that uh, disaster, yeah. as well as the, it was used for coronavirus public health analysis. That same technology but was licensed uh, the, and I founded this uh, company and the company uh, serves basically, um, you know, among the key markets serves is financial. And uh, huh? yeah. in coronavirus, for example, they came up with something called panic index. Okay. Oh, okay. And, uh, 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 you know, which is similar to kind of, I, I, I here talked about social quality index. They came with panic index, panic uh, index. not, not involving in, with, without my involvement and uh, essentially uh, showed, um, you know, uh, industry wide impact uh, of, of uh, that panic index and um, also market uh, reaction to the panic kind of stuff and correlation of that. So um, we had taken um, two years worth of Twitter data, entire Twitter data, you know, a massive amount of thing. And we uh, did a, uh, you know, uh, uh, call on uh, data until the Friday end for Monday morning. Uh, and, and the results were uh, fairly, uh, fairly good. Um, of course, sentiment analysis, emotion. The, so sentiment analysis has been used in market for quite some time with some limited success. This yeah. company specializes in emotion 
uh, you know, analysis. So my, uh, brands, for example, um, well, I mean, most of the brand value is uh, intangible and it is highly tied to the, uh, you know, emotional attachment of the customers uh, uh, to that company. So these are all the things that you can study uh, and, and, and they are extremely important because, uh, again, it varies on by the company, but some of the company's brand value is um, hugely important. And for such things, uh, being able to understand what's happening, uh, where uh, you are losing uh, customers uh, after you launch a new product or where your customers are very happy or what, uh, um, what, um, uh, uh, how customers are reacting to either a sale or a, a price increase. These are all very well doable uh, using these technologies um, and, and um, uh, they, they should be deployed. Uh, uh, now, you, I, may, I may give you a relevant uh, um, insight. Um, I was able to predict 2012 election. Um, uh, I said that uh, I was able to predict uh, Brexit before the uh, US market closed. So hours Great. before the thing and uh, his fund company was a customer. Uh, we predicted 2016 election where uh, everybody uh, uh, said, uh, I, I called the election when there were 60% uh, probability by everybody uh, for Hillary Clinton to win. And um, we called a Senate election in Alabama, very narrowly won. Uh, so uh, these, when applied right, um, uh, there was a reason why we succeeded and many, many, many social media companies failed. And of the course. reason was the semantics, the, the meaning that I, I, I indicated why we were able to get this bup and bup and buprenorphine quite correctly. Another example is that we're looking for spice. Uh, spice as in strict drug name, uh, but if you just search by spice, you get pumpkin spice latte uh, yeah. or you get uh, cooking spice. <clears throat> so there is a refinement of technologies that's necessary, but if you have that, then uh, this becomes a lot more possible and we are technologically we are at that stage. So the question is now simply finding the technology and applying to right problem. Uh, in that case, you'll get uh, uh, some uh, advantage over your competition. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Uh, there is one very uh, interesting question, you know, since uh, uh, it's a lot about interpretation apart from uh, getting your algorithm right as well. Somebody is saying, how about throwing some light on ethics and AI? Uh, at least in US, ethics in AI is a very important topic um, and rightly so. So um, uh, when you apply machine learning, uh, you are trying to mimic uh, human, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 our own society. Uh, and uh, it, it has happened uh, in many different ways, for example, um, uh, the people who are training the, um, you know, the, our, our own society is biased. For example, in India, there is, uh, uh, let's say, caste-related uh, issues. In the U.S., there's racial, racial issues. And um, when people are training the machines, uh, well, that, that often shows up. When people interact with the machines, that shows up too. Uh, we want to, there are two ways of thinking about it. Well, if you are training the machines based on what humans do and our society is so uh, screwed up, uh, well, how, how do you expect machines to do better than uh, what we ourselves do? So our society is really not all that um, you know, ethical anyway. But the other thing is that, no, you want to uh, do better than what we do. Uh, and and, and, and uh, you want the you know, uh, computing to, to, to be more fair. Uh, and, 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 and because of that, um, uh, there is substantial attention to ethics, um, uh, trustworthiness, and many other issues. Now, this topic is so varied that I can't give one generic answer, uh, answer to you. But um, in certain things, like when you're giving, let's say, healthcare, well, obviously, you should not, um, uh, you know... Uh, Data privacy. Privacy is for, by itself an issue, very big yeah. issue, and we handle that. Uh, I gave the example of uh, pediatric asthma. We obviously had to, uh, um, you know, address all of this issue. Right now, as we speak, uh, we are developing COVID-19 uh, application, chatbot application that will be used for entire university. There'll be more than 30,000 students. So 
um, uh, privacy is a good issue, but I think by itself is a separate issue. And um, uh, uh, there are, um, uh, in, in my institute, we have set up a uh, kind of a, 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 an ad hoc committee where we have a philosopher, we have a journalism professor, we have a business professor, and of course, we have computer scientists as a committee working and looking at some of these issues. Again, it, will vary, it varies by that for health issues, there are different things. Uh, for, uh, for computer program like chatbot being trained by human community. So there's a well-known example where Microsoft put a chatbot online, within one day it became a racist uh, you know, chatbot because uh, people uh, communicated with uh, it uh, you know, uh, and, and with, with that purpose itself. Uh, to make it racial and it became racist. So, so uh, I mean, you know, there's no one size fit all, but there are uh, frameworks that are evolving and there are principles that everybody has put together. So today you can even Google yeah. and find that Microsoft or uh, Google all have uh, come up with uh, certain principles, uh, certain mm -hmm. university like Northwestern has coordinated a large, um, uh, you know, bodies now and they come with the principles. But the challenge is with implementation and that implementation is unique to the problem you solve, the data that you use, the uh, AI techniques you use and so on and so forth. Uh, I, you know, it's, uh, it's I, like I, having a code of conduct for the organizations in which now AI should also be included. Basically, it is that. Yeah, that, 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 that is there. In fact, our funding agencies require that we certainly pay attention to that. Uh, it's a kind of a requirement part of our submission. How are we handling uh, ethics uh, when we are proposing an AI project? Thank you so much for that well-rounded presentation and also patiently answering all the questions. I have a couple of more questions, but I think it's getting very, very late now. So I would request uh, Professor Mani to wrap up. And before that, uh, we would like to announce, or maybe he should announce about this Friday's uh, EMDP. I leave it to you, Professor Mani now. All right, thank you, Dr. Amit. That was uh, a wonderful all-round presentation covering so many different aspects of AI. And I think looking at the diversity of the participants and the profiles that they come from very, very diverse, it was indeed very, very revealing. Thank you once again, and uh, we look forward to further interaction with you as we go on. Uh, for the benefit of all our uh, members and guests this evening, we want to announce that our next MDP is going to be this Friday. And uh, we're already heading towards about 100 participants for this, and we hope we really make it happen. This is by the very well-known uh, Dr. Muradian. Uh, for those from JBIMS would know him uh, very well. He's going to talk about manufacturing excellence. I'm sure you've already seen all the advertisements on Facebook pages and LinkedIn pages and website of BMA. In case you need some more information, please reach across to any one of us. And you're welcome to participate in this webinar, MDP format, as we call the Friday Fundamentals EMDP. Please note that the timing is 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, not the standard timing uh, as you do in a Wednesday webinar. The other good news is the next Wednesday webinar is going to be by a very well-known finance expert, uh, Mr. Vinayak Jadav, who has about 30 years plus of corporate experience till he moved on to set up his own entrepreneurship venture. He's going to cover a very, very important topic for us, and that is how to plan for an early retirement. And don't start getting worried, but I think all of us know that uh, post COVID, there is gonna be a shakeup in terms of the economy, uh, jobs, job security issues, et cetera, et cetera. So he's gonna be covering these topics in the next uh, Wednesday webinar. I'm also delighted to share with you that our speaker for the 27th May webinar uh, is also in place. That's our own uh, BMA committee member, Vaijanti Nayak. She's in the process of finalizing the exact topic, but it will be more to do with human resource management. Of course, uh, we had him with us uh, in the earlier part of the session 
on the 20th of May, Rajesh Srivastava, who is a marketing stalwart, is going to have an MDP on how to do business and succeed in COVID times. So that's the kind of lineup already in place. Uh, we mentioned somewhere in passing, uh, one of our colleagues here, Jatin Pancholi, is also in touch with us and we are hoping that he will freeze up the topic and the date with us in the next couple of days. So looking forward to more of learning times. I know we are all worried about COVID times, but I think we should start thinking about learning times and I'm sure we can steer this journey as comfortably. Thank you once again uh, for all of us who've been part of this uh, session, Wednesday webinar. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Mehul Kawadia, uh, who is the treasurer of uh, the current uh, BMA executive committee. And uh, Mehul has got company, I think he's got his, uh, Mehul, will you tell us who that uh, potential BMA applicant 20 years hence is in your lap? He's my grandson. Wow, so yeah, Mehul I... is doctrinating his grandson into BMA. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Mehul, for getting him along. Thank yeah, you, he's everybody. Getting inducted. He's Sorry? getting inducted. Okay. So, yeah. thank you, everybody, and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.